Hey everyone, and welcome back to another YouTube video on Pico CTF 2018. In this video, I want to take a look at the resources challenge. It's only worth 50 points. It says, we put together a bunch of resources to help you out on their website. If you go there, you might even find a flag. And here is the link to the page, and it offers just a link that you can click on right here. This challenge is a little trivial. It's not too hard. Uh, really, it's just look at this page and read through it. You've got some links here to check out. General skills, cryptography, web exploitation, forensics, binary exploitation, reversing, and a lot of other really cool stuff. Honestly, I haven't gone through this yet. Um, we actually have, they have a featured YouTube channel, so that's pretty neato. Totally, I want to take a look at that. Oh, it's Mr. Carlisle. He is fantastic. I know him kind of personally through some of my stuff at uh, military academies. So there's a lot of in really interesting like content here that you can totally read through, and I would recommend it. And it's honestly just a good place to go to when you don't know the answer to one challenge or something that you may be looking at, kind of under that umbrella uh, of the category, you know, of the challenge that you're working on. And it's awesome when you're doing that in CTF. So this is certainly a good resource, and that's important to kind of have in our back pocket. At the very bottom, below this video tutorials here, it says, thanks for reading the resources page. Here's the flag for your time, which you can copy and paste, take note of, and I'll actually do that. I'm going to create a flag.txt file, as I usually do. And we can go ahead and head back to the original page, submit it for our 50 points. We can put this together in a get flag script if we just copy the link address as we usually do. I'm going to use curl, which you may have seen or used before. If not, you can just sudo apt install curl if you don't have it installed on your system or whatever package manager that you need. So curl will allow us to make a request to the web page and view the output of the page. So like literally seeing the HTML source, you can see the flag right here in the output. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pipe that to grep, and a lot of times I've done this in previous videos, so hopefully it's nothing new, but if it's a new technique for you, as you're starting to watch these videos for the first time, cool, hope you enjoy, uh, grep, grep will let us search, at least when we're piping, at least through the output that we give into the program, uh, and I'm using tack O for only, so I want to return only the search results that I return and, and, and wanted to filter for to begin with, and tack capital E to get regular expressions or extended regular expression support. So that way I can use the flag format, Pico CTF, and then the curly braces, and I'm going to use some regular expressions inside here to say period and then a star. So period to match anything, and then a star or asterisk to match multiple, or like as much of you can of that. So once I run through that, it says a little bit of the curl connection stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and make that silent with tack S, and then I'm going to use tack tack color equals none on grep, so we don't get that red color, and that just that will return only the flag for us, so that's pretty handy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make a get flag script with that. So nano, bin bash is a shebang line, pump that there, mark that as executable, it runs just fine, and we can mark that challenge as complete. All right, what do we got next? These are, this are, <laughs> this is, these are words. Um, reversing warm-up number one, 50 points. Throughout your journey, you'll have to run many programs. Can you navigate to this on the shell server and run this program to retrieve the flag? So it allows us to download the program. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to make directory for reversing warm-up number one. Head to that directory, wget that file. And if you have not used Linux before, or you just don't particularly know how to run stuff, you will want to dot slash, and that's kind of the term, I, su I suppose, uh, the colloquial name that I'm going to go ahead and use that I, that I normally use, because you want to say in this current directory, so the period or the dot to mean the current directory, uh, relative to it, I want to run this file or whatever program we want to run. Except it has to be marked as an executable. So the way you can do that is the simple chmod command to like change or modify, make make modifications of the file to add permissions to it. And plus x, that x or the executable bit will mark it as executable. And we just have to supply the file that we want there. So now if I run dot slash run, actually if I were to check out ls, you can see it's highlighted green. And ls tech l, you can see I've added the executable bit to all of the columns here. So myself or the owner, the group that owns it, that's the third column. Again, I, it's still me and my group that owns it, and then everyone. So everyone can run this. Now dot slash run, and we get the flag. So if we wanted to put that as get flag, or, or redirect that to a static file, and we can actually just move the program itself to named get flag. Simple stuff. Okay. 
let's go ahead and submit this flag. Easy. And as usual, mark this challenge as complete. Okay, next challenge, reversing warm-up number two, is can you decode the following string from base64 format into ASCII? So base64 is super duper common in capture the flag competitions. If you haven't seen it before, you can simply Google it. Base64 on Wikipedia is a type of encoding or a scheme of representing characters and data and information in a peculiar way. It is pretty easy to identify because it'll look like a lot of seemingly random like letters and uppercase, lowercase letters with occasional numbers thrown in. And the only other characters aside from that that are acceptable are a plus sign and a forward slash. So those are the acceptable characters in the base64 format. And you'll see those just maybe rarely, but the most common stuff are seemingly random, uppercase, lowercase letters, more uppercase than usual sometimes, and that's what makes it kind of easily identifiable. The most important telltale about base64 is that it ends the, the like, the very, very end of the string, or of the encoded data, is a normally a set of equal signs. It's It doesn't have to have a set of equal signs, because the, the reason that the equal signs are there is because the length of this data has to be a multiple of four. So if the encoded information, like if the transformation of regular letters into their encoded form does not end up giving you a perfect factor of four, like multiplicant, if that's a word, multiplicant, I, I don't know. If, if it's not a multiplication factor, or if it's not a multiple of four, it will add these equal signs at the very, very end as padding to make sure that it will eventually, like, it, it, you'll have one, two, three, or none sets of equal signs there at the very, very end to make sure that it's a length of a multiple of four. So, peculiar thing. In this case, we don't have a equal sign at the very, very end. And, okay, if we wanted to, you could just go to an online tool to base64 decode information. There are a lot of these that are crappy and stupid and dumb, and they waste a lot of time, in my opinion. I want to be able to automate this process. I want to be able to do it from the command line or from Python or whatever that we're working with. So there is a utility, base64, that you just have on your command line. And normally I would echo stuff into this. I would just pipe it in, and that will decode it for us just fine. Um, another tactic that I've kind of seen, which may be another interesting style, is if you read it in at the very, very end by using these three less than redirection signs. So just like that, and you'll still decode it as you would expect. Python can do this as well. You can just have a string and you can do dot decode base64, and that's the route that you should go. Another option is to import the entire base64 module and then run base64 dot b64 decode on it but i want to get into the habit more of just simply using the string dot decode base64 because you don't need to import a whole module it just seems to be a little a little better a little faster whatever nicer so that is the flag we can go ahead and actually make a specific directory for that reversing warm up to actually i'm going to mark this as complete already since we know that we've got the flag at this point and we can go ahead and do just that. I'm going to use Python to actually print out the Pico CTF portion of it that I want, and then I'll get the percent %s in there, and I'll percent it with our string that, that we have decoded from base64. Okay, now we have a simple get flag script. Not particularly necessary in Python because I did it from the command line one, so I guess I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I'm using bash to just call Python, but Simple stuff. You could done that. You could have done that in just Python if you wanted to and created a Python script just like that. It, I, I should have done that. <laughs> cool. Um, let's go ahead and run that. Redirect it to flag.txt. Throw it in our clipboard so we can submit it for points. And keep winning. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, I think the first set of the Pico CTF challenges are for someone that does a little bit of CTF stuff, like that is used to this kind of material, this kind of content, this stuff is pretty easy to run through. And I'm trying to describe what I can. And if you haven't seen it before, and hopefully I'm not jumping into too difficult of concepts or, or being too quick on the keyboard for some interesting things. Why is there a typo here? Cri <laughs> Cryptio, Crypto. <laughs> 
All right, I want to give a quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. You're the best. You are what keep me motivated and a, a reason to wake up in the morning. Why does it always sound like I'm like depressed whenever I give this <laughs> this, this thank you spiel? One dollar a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. Five dollars or more on Patreon will give you early access to anything that I release on YouTube before it goes live. Uh, I need to be better about actually getting some content backlogged and ready to be visible in there, um, but hopefully that does not dissuade you from helping support. <laughs> I'm grateful. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, link in the description is to join our Discord server if you want to hang out with me, other cool people. Uh, it's really just a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. So if you want to hang out with any of us uh, and tackle other Catch the Flag competitions, not just Pico, or even discuss more of Pico now that the game is over, uh, it's a great place to do that. So thank you guys so much. Hope to see you on Patreon. Hope to see you in the next video. I love you. Bye.